everybody. I'm going to call the meeting of Public Works to order. Um, roll call right away. We'll start out with uh, Alderperson Heidemann. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. And Alderperson Decker is here. We will start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, does anybody, is there any objection to skipping the introduction? I think everybody knows everyone here. Okay. Um, then we'll go right to approval of minutes from October 25th, 2022. I move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Those was aye. Those are approved. All right. Item number six, resolution 87 23 November 7, 2022, resolution authorizing the appropriate city official to enter into an addendum number one for the contract with both Infrastructure and Environment LLC for design services related to the Southside Sewer Facility Plan. Director? I'm going to uh, defer this to City Engineer sure. uh, Ryan Stasma okay. just to talk about this is again our sanitary interceptor that's running along this lakeshore. You recall I had the map up on the wall where it goes yep. from our, our plant here all the way along the lakeshore. We're going to have to redo and protect all the way to approximately in this location here at Kentucky Avenue, this off station. So the sewage comes to here, comes down, and goes all the way to the plant. So we've been engineering this project for the last two years getting close to actually going out for construction. But with that, we have to do uh, an amended. Um, uh, is this, this is the wrong project. It's right. No, but it's, it's, still, it's, all, it's all tied together. Yeah, yeah and it's, we, we, it's, it's all tied we've been together. doing this going back and forth. We have, this south side, we have the South Shoreline Interceptor Project, and then we have the South Side Interceptor Project. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have, you recall, Ryan and I, we've been, we, with the industrial park and the expansion of the south and looking at the, this, the um, Werner subdivision along with the pole farm and now the Garpin farm, long range future planning to how to serve this with sanitary sewer. Right now, this is all new area. So part of it is, is eventually once this all gets developed, we're gonna have to get sewage from this area. Right now, it's all going down Weedy Creek Road and then up County EE, then along here, Lakeshore, there's a lift station here in the town of Wilson that then pumps it from that point to the treatment plant. The sanitary sewer in Weeding Creek is going to be too small in the future. And it's fine today. <clears throat> and it's probably fine for the next five to 10, 15 years, all depending upon how fast development grows. The problem is, is the county's coming in and going to redo Weeding Creek in 2020, 2025. 2025. All the way from South Business to South 12. Project, I think we can all agree we on. Yeah, we yes. <laughs> so part of the study was, okay, <laughs> let's look at options. Let's look at alternatives uh, versus going right down Weeding Creek. It's very deep and it's very expensive. And, um, and timing wise, rush this through and get this in so we looked at alternatives and one of the alternatives is this sewage from this area we can go up south business drive and then through the alliant energy power line corridor through here to the new sanitary sewer the advantage of this is it's all gravity we don't have to go through their pump station anymore we can bypass it and go gravity all the way to the plant this is future planning. So in order to do this, we have to we work with the designers doing this. The other thing is, is when the Gartman farm that we are all familiar with, I believe you're all part of the annexation and purchase of this, this will be served with a new line serving this whole subdivision. It can cross under Weeding Creek and then go up 18th Street into this new line that would also then feed. So in other words, it, it helps for a couple of reasons. This new alternative ultimately bypasses the town's lift station because right now we are sending 
Jordan helped me out with this. Over 65% of the sewage is city through their right. lift station, and it would only increase. And we're paying them every year annually costs to send our sewage to their lift station so it can get pumped to the treatment plant. So just a real background on that. <coughs> Ryan, maybe you can explain the need for the change order of the design, what we're working on with them at this stage. You mean with the with the, with the, the IFC right here? Yes. Yeah, we, like, let's say, the big driver of this is, is the county's redoing Wheaton Creek Road in 2025. We know we owe in the future, like David mentioned, five, 10 years, 15 years from now, we know that sewer is going to be too small. So now is the time to look at possibly getting a sewer out of there in the next couple of years or finding a different route. So we looked at three or four different routes and the, the path of economically, financially, and the path of least resistance is to go through that utility corridor. But obviously it's all green space. So this IFC or this resolution gives us gives us the funding to get the wetlands all marked because we just can't go through there don't get the wetlands looked at. We, know we, we know we have some wetlands right. here and how do we get around it or what do we do to permit to go underneath it we went, and that's this what this addendum would allow us to do it maps these it, it really identifies the best route for a sewer to come through here and then ultimately it gives us the next stage or direction how do we permit how do we get it done we need to we need to find out where those wetlands are and there do that and, and look, and look, what's nice going through that area is, it, is it, i don't think you have to do a whole lot of digging you can do a lot of directional boring but you still gotta know where those wetlands are because they're going to have some holes in there someplace so that's what this is for it's so we looked at three or four different designs and this is definitely the one to go like i said it's a best financially and it's a path of least resistance you got to deal with roads and all this kind of stuff and other utilities so so this is basically to get us so that we know that we can do this, not that all of a sudden we have this idea that this is how we're going to do it, and then all of a sudden they've got the new road in, and all of a sudden we find out, oh, no, we can't do this. Right, right. <laughs> so we want to be able to make sure that we can do that. This is the plan, and that's why we want to be ahead of the game, right? Right. To be to make sure that this is the so the the future when we want to do it, we can do it. Okay, that's a great point. I said that our last choice is re upgrading the sewer to Wheaton Creek Road, but if you have to for various reasons, well, then you yeah. have to. Yeah, but you but want you to know, know that now, yes, you so that we have to, right? We're going to do it. Yes. Go ahead, Chairman. So then that study will all be done before Wheaton Creek Road gets tore up yeah. and redone. My other thing, what's the possibility of the DNR or somebody else stepping in and saying, you want to put a sewer over there? You can't do that. And actually, we're going through that right now. We're meeting actually. Because this is this is such a large study area, mm -hmm. this is considered part with the DNR is called a facility plan. So we're meeting with the town of Wilson because it also impacts their we come all the sewer systems are combined mm -hmm. in an, in a sense that we all are sharing the treatment plant. So we all the, the collection and the pipes, it all it's all connected one another. So they're gonna be a partner in this as well. Ultimately. The DNR, we have to go through a hearing with the DNR and they have to bless this. Right. They have to say, we agree with this plan. This makes the best economical sense moving forward for the long term. If they come back, they might tell us, you know, this doesn't make sense. The engineers we're working with are confident that they've done all the right analysis. They do cost benefit of looking out alternatives, which the DNR will also look at. Based on this, this is the preferred alternative. So that's what we're going through. Okay, so, but there's what twenty one thousand dollars in this mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah, event, okay. yeah. So, are are we going to know from the DNR whether or not they're going to get their blessing before we spend any of that twenty one thousand? No, this no. twenty one thousand will be needed to do this phase of the of the of the submittal to the DNR. Correct. Okay. Before, before you can really submit this to the DNR, they're going to want to know where those wetlands are there. I know our consultant has had preliminary talks about our, you know, a couple of different designs mm -hmm. we're looking at. And they're, the DNR is somewhat on board going, going this route. They realize it's the best way to go. We're still going to want to know what kind of, yeah. what kind of vegetation if, is if, there. If, we're, if we have the ability to bypass a lift station, that's a positive. Right. Okay. Because then you're not worried about mechanical, electrical, any types of potential failures because it's just gravity fed. Um, and I appreciate that. I'm also I'm just concerned about um, that green space being a habitat, right? And how is it? How does it affect it ecologically, right. not just economy? So the, the, there'll there'll be there'll be some disruption 
No, ecologically. Like, how does it oh, affect yeah, yeah. the animals and the habitat? There'll be there'll be some disruption during construction, mm -hmm. but once it's done, it's just going to be reverted back to the nat natural. And the DNR is thinking that oh, yes. that lens yeah. as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's part of the that's part, part of the review as well. Cool. You know, and there is some disruption in that area, anyways, because there are the power lines there. I mean, you have to work on those towers. They have to do all that stuff. Okay. In the, in the, you know, and that, and this is I mean, also I'm guessing that this has to do studies in how to work around those towers. Not that the, right. not, not that you dig underneath one and also <laughs> right. something is, is is in place the correct correct way. So, in in digging would be minimal. Like I said, they would bore that thing underneath the ground ten or fifteen feet. The technology has gotten so much better in the last 20, 25 years. Can I ask, um, how long does this study hold, or the results hold true if, if we don't need to do this for 15 years? You know what I mean, what I'm getting at? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it would be considered a long range plan. Okay. So, I mean, it will be good for five to 10 years, but then, you know, every five, 10 years, you, you review it and update it if things are changing. So, uh, and then you just do you submit an update. It's not like you have to go through a whole new submittal no. design process. Again. If you would have to do that, you got ninety percent of the work done already. So you're not you're not starting from ground zero again. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Then someone want to make a motion? I move to accept the uh, resolution. Second. Motion has been second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, it's terrible. It's I. And it goes forward. Uh, number seven, general ordinance number 12, 22, November 7th, 2022, ordinance repealing general ordinance number 42, 2022, so as to remove the two-way street designation for South 24th Street, Indiana Avenue and Georgia Avenue, between Indiana Avenue and Georgia Avenue, adding a parking on the west side of South 24th Street between Indiana Avenue and Georgia Avenue. I am very familiar with this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Indiana Avenue right here. This is South 24th Street right here. It's Georgia Avenue. Back in April, we switched uh, South 24th Street from a one-way street to a two-way street temporarily. And the reason we did that is because Indiana this last spring, summer, summer slash fall was reconstructed from Taylor up to 24th Street. <clears throat> with all the construction going on, this was a one-way street going southbound, and, and, and then the property owners were having a heck of a time getting to their house. So we temporarily then moved it from a one-way to a two-way, so then they could access 24th Street off of Georgia. That's okay. that, that's why we just switched it temporarily from a one to a two. But all that construction is gone, so we want to go back to a one-way street. Because in order in order for it to go to temporary two-way, we had to take parking off of one side. Yeah. And parking up in that neighborhood is a premium. It yeah. just is. And I have so, been getting, I have been getting calls. When is that getting switched back? When is that getting switched back? Is it well? Bureaucracy has to roll. We have to have to go through. So I'm hoping for support for this. <laughs> <laughs> it was something we talked about yes. before we did. It, yes. So. Yes. So. So how long have they been living with the uh, two way? Two -way Since April. Since April. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And construction yeah. had done a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so. We're used to it. But they're going to want to. They, well, they want it back. They want the parking. They want the parking. It's okay. You, you can get away with one side parking during the summer, but come winter, it's, it's a lot more. Yeah. It's a lot more. Uh, they need it. So I move to accept the ordinance. I'll second. Motion's made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The poll is aye. aye. That is approved. Okay. Number eight, general ordinance number 13, 22, 23, November 7th, 2022, an ordinance amending sections 122 122-403 to 122-404, 122-405 of the municipal code relating to sewers and sewage disposal as to make changes to service charges. This is- That'll be Jordan. Jordan. And, and the background is in, with the budget being approved. Okay. This now, establishes the wastewater rates for 2023. So that's what word it's in. It, it usually always lakes the budget, but Jordan can explain the process and how it's uh, calculated. Okay. So with this being my first year here, I've been very impressed with the rate tool that um, my predecessors used to figure this out each year. It's very complicated. <laughs> and so it's been, uh, there are a lot of moving parts to it. Basically we look at um, what has come to the sewer plant this past year, um, both the volume of wastewater as well as the loadings, things like phosphorus and the carbon that's in the water, solids, things like that. 
and then try to make sure that what we're charging for next year is adequate to handle um, our anticipated expenses for next year. So we look at what came in this past year, we look at our projected budget for next year, and then we um, look at what our rates were for this past year and make sure that if, if those need to be adjusted that we do that. Um, the good news is that basically the bottom line for this coming year is that we we were pretty close to being um, right where we needed to be. Um, you would see that we up, we increased our fixed rate four dollars a quarter. So for your average home or for any customer, really, it's sixteen bucks a year. So if their volume of their wastewater is consistent next year as it was this year, their charge will be only sixteen dollars for the year more. So. Um, we kept the volume charge the same. Um, it does get into a lot more details with some, some of our aligned communities or some of our big industries that send wastewater to us that has really high loadings with phosphorus or things. For the most part, those numbers came down. Um, they're paying less for phosphorus, they're paying less for carbon, they're paying a little bit more for solids. And so most of our customers, I think, on the on our bigger users will actually see their prices go down a little bit. So um, there might be some changes that Caitlin and I look to do next year with this whole process, especially as, as I try to understand it a little bit better. But for the most part, I think it's really robust, a really robust way to, to make sure our rates are adequate and our impact to our average user is, is really pretty minimal. So certainly recommend um, approval if you're comfortable with that. And then I will go back to the council next week and, uh, and be official for next year. Thank you, George. Okay, questions. Okay. Well, when's the last? Uh, did you have a question? No. Yeah. When's the last time the rate was changed? It's done annually. It'd be so every year it goes up four dollars a year. Um, no, it's different from year to year. For example, last year the the fixed charge, which is what I'm changing, okay. I'm proposing to change this year. Last year that stayed the same, but um, like the uh, the carbon charge went up quite a bit. And so we were just talking about the town of Wilson and their lift station and things like that. They saw their bill from us go up quite a bit because they had high carbon in their in their wastewater. So, um, you know, we've shared some of these preliminary numbers with some of those customers like that, and they've been, I think, pretty happy with what they've seen because that's actually gone down a little bit. So it just varies each year. Um, for example, this year we had a pretty dry year, mm -hmm. and so our volume charge didn't have to go up. Um, other years, um, it does because maybe we had a wetter year, and so there was more expense to us as the plant, and we have to reflect that. So for 2023, it goes up four dollars. Correct. Okay, sixteen dollars a year. I understand it. So in 2024, we'll come back to you a year from now with how did 2023 play out, and what do we recommend? So there's not a, there's not a, it can't be a situation where we raise the 12 or four dollars this year that the following year we're not going to have to raise it another four dollars we're not it just varies from year to year so um my recommendation will always be to have this past year reflect what we recommend for next year just to have adequate revenues without overburdening our our customers well, so exactly that's... well what i say is, is there a way that are we going to be uh, <clears throat> getting any additional money by raising it to four dollars you know th that we won't have to raise it as high in 2024. It's certainly possible. Um, and, and again, it never goes backwards. <laughs> well, it, 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 it has. Yeah. I mean, included in here is debt repayment. So sometimes then all of a sudden that principal and interest from a past project is paid off. Okay. Then that's not reflected in the rate. And then you'll see then you don't have to make up that revenue for that that portion. So there there it, there has been there there are fluctuations where it's it's for the most part the model is to be smooth, very steady. If there's increases, they're manageable, kind of cost of mm -hmm. with inflation and so forth. Um, but that's that's part of the equation too, and that's where the fixed costs and and volume cost charges they they fluctuate. Sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down depending upon. The flows and where the money is being used. Do you ever have anybody argue with you with the amount of carbon or whatever that they have and say, "Hey, we're not sending that much," and they don't want to, they don't want to pay that? For the most part, no, because they do their own sampling or they're involved with that. So okay. we're basing our bills to them on the results they're providing to us. Okay. So if they're not, I mean, they may wonder why did my amount of carbon go up this year, but 
our bill to them is based on the results they're providing to us. Okay. So does like Town of Wilson, like I know we monitor, like you, you guys do monitors to certain factories and things like that. So the, the, do they monitor theirs also? Do they go around and monitor or, or they, do they just live with what they have? Mostly at that lift station yes. that we talked about earlier, they will sample that and then they provide those results to us and their bill is based on that. Okay, but they don't like go and find out who's, who's giving them the more carbon or whatever. Not that I know of. Okay. Um, I'm not aware of there being significant industries. Yeah, in for, for for the most part, they're they're like what we call our yeah, so communities. They don't have a lot of industry. The only one would be Aldrich, 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 but Aldrich is their own Aldrich. their own discharge and lift station. It comes right right. So they have to do their own sampling. Oh, they do. Oh, that's yeah. well, a separate thing for that. Oh, okay, okay. Right. By far, our main bill to Wilson goes to that lift station that David was pointing out earlier, but there's a separate district with Aldrich okay. that gets a separate bill entirely. Okay. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, Jordan, that the the like the the charges from the townships are also based on again a three year average. So that when you talk about like their BOD and their TSS and all those other things that are calculated, it's like on a three year moving average. So if they have one spike, one one sampling period during a year it's not like it jumps up their their rates it's all averaged in with their overall flows right. over time it's something and i think they feel like this is a pretty fair approach because it's based on what they're actually sending us um you know so again if they made improvements so they had fewer solids in their water then you know they would see their rate go down accordingly so it's a very um I think it's a very fair way to, to bill our customers. What about Sheboygan Falls? What about um, the other lines that are coming in? It's a similar <laughs> it's a similar process. I haven't looked at their specific um, numbers, but I would assume that it's um, going to be a similar result for them as Wilson. They're all under we're, we're, they're, those are contracted communities that mm -hmm. we, we we accept their waste from, and it's all based on the same principle of how it's it's volume of flow as well as the strength of their waste. So it's it's the same for every community. Then when they when they do their testing, they send us the results, and based on what they're sending us, that's how their rates calculate. So it's it's been it's been in place. I mean, uh, since I 1975. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we closed our uh, system down at Sheboygan Falls okay. and yep. hooked up. What about the town of Sheboygan? Are they ever happy or not? <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't heard complaints from the town of Sheboygan. So, um, as far as I know, the biggest thing that they would like is clarity, you know, to, to know what these rates are coming up so they can budget appropriately for them. So, I'm sure they're very, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Any other well, questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. A second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number nine, resolution 86 2223, November 7th, 2022, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to purchase order for the emergency purchase replacement of a bucket truck for the Motor Vehicle Division of the Department of Public Works and authorizing the necessary budget adjustments to provide funding for the purchase. Is that Rick or Dave? Or well, I think Rick and I can, can okay. I, I'll start off with a little background. We have an older bucket truck that was in the fleet and it was due for an inspection. Uh, these have to be inspected per the company and certification to be able to use it safely. When it went in uh, during, due to its age and uh, its state of um, condition with corrosion, it didn't pass. So I, mean, I think this was how, how how old was this vehicle? It's a 2007. After 15, this was its 15th year. So after 15 years, they had to do an integrity test. This was its first integrity test, and it failed. Okay. So, <laughs> so very, very, you know, so the dilemma is, is you know, we we knew these were coming up for replacement in the program. This sure. one just all of a sudden leapfrogged and became it's it's a need. We were going to go in and put it in the budget and, and adjust and do it next year. The dilemma is, is if we waited, we would not get one till first quarter of 25. 25. Oh, yes. So the company has a demo 
right now that where we purchased the last one, utility sales and service, it was pre-ordered. Yes, it oh, was pre-ordered. Yeah. It, was, it was pre-ordered for them to use as a demo uh, that'll okay. be on the ground in May. And if we were if we were able to commit to it yeah. now, uh -huh. they'll hold it for us. Do you have another bucket truck? We have another one, yes. Okay. But we need to. Okay. Yeah. Right. As we know, as we so, look, as, as, as last June testifies, we need to have two bucket trucks. <laughs> so we, we, we already took the liberty to put um, a letter of commitment pending this, this meeting uh -huh. <laughs> and Common Council Monday. So the company is holding it okay. and uh, with the expectation that we're going to buy it. And the, we worked with Caitlin administration. We have the money. It's a budget. Well, this will be a budget adjustment, but then we're, we're able to send the purchase order and then by May. We'll have it. Question. Uh, Amanda first. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's what we're paying now is what we pay even if we waited for the 25 one, right? Or would we pay more? Well, the price in 25 would increase. Uh, right. Yeah. I, how much? I couldn't answer that. Yeah. It, it, would, it, it would be an increase. You need the okay. <laughs> you need the truck. Okay. You need the truck. Okay. our system, we could have pinpointed this last year that this truck might be going down or is there any other thing that do we have any other safeguards as, as far as any other vehicles and and how we check and maintain our equipment that yeah. says you know what this is going to rust out tomorrow yeah well, I'll, I'll defer to rick a little bit about that he might yeah. have a, a a better understanding of it's not it's it's not yeah I, <laughs> It's uh, being that this was the first year it was actually tested. There's a, it's a new it's a new state law. This is the first year it's been in effect, so we weren't anticipating this to come about. To be honest with you, um, once they started digging into it, and when the, when they do the the state testing, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty severe. Mm -hmm. Once they started digging into it, they uncovered um, more severe rust than we, we were anticipating by looking at it just casually. So, so nobody had been looking at the truck as as it gets worse and worse. A, a, a point I'm trying to make is I don't want to have to send out anybody with equipment that's that's going to fail the next week. And and I, I would think that there is a, some type of a system by which we're checking our equipment to making sure that we don't have to wait till the state mandates something that we have to replace it. We do look at, we do do our preventive maintenance inspections twice a year on these. And also they do an annual inspection that doesn't include the chassis, it's more the, the aerial lift mechanisms that they that they test every year. Um, we do look at the, the trucks, it's just that it wasn't looked at with a pick or they would actually pick into the frame and look for soft spots and things like that. We, we actually anticipate we had another bucket truck. We have a bucket truck that's older. That's yes. older that we really, it's on our plan to replace mm -hmm. that we were anticipating. Oh, I don't think this one, and that one passed. It, had, it, 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 so we're, we're, we were like. Part of the reason for that we believe is that the, the, the truck that passed, which is older, stays inside in winter mostly in this, this, Electrical bucket truck goes out in all weather and it comes in salty and then it isn't washed right away. It does sit and corrodes. Yeah, I mean, I worry about us waiting to get it until May, considering what our it's winter... out of service now. What? No, I'm saying the new one. Waiting oh. to not get the new one until May, considering the winter that we might have, right? So we'll just have to count that that old one yeah. sticks it through. It's a concern. Can you get some income for the old one? Now, uh, yes, we're, we are planning on selling because the lift part that is inspected annually mm -hmm. is in, actually in pretty good shape. So we're looking to sell it through Wisconsin Surplus, advertising it as a, a, a needing to be a new chassis or reframed mm -hmm. or just somebody who just needs lift, lift, lift parts. Um, the value isn't huge. It's, we're estimating around 15000 which is not see that. Isn't a big help compared to the price of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? I move to accept. I'll second. Motion is made and seconded. You have a session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Everyone's aye. That is approved. All right. Next meeting date is November 29th, 2022. 
Motion for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.